Welcome to another episode of the Watch Me Wholesale Show. Here's how this works. I'm gonna randomly select a market, then I'm gonna go into that market and find a discounted property for sale, then I'm gonna crunch the numbers and call and make an offer. Now guys, I'm gonna do this using PropWire. If you've never heard of PropWire, it's the largest database of seller leads in the country with over 157 million records nationwide. And best of all, it's absolutely free to search and download as many seller leads as you want. But first, if you're new here, my name is Jerry Norton. I make millions of dollars a year wholesaling and flipping houses. And here on my YouTube channel, I show you how to do the same. So if you wanna be a flipping genius like me and live your dream life, subscribe to my channel and watch my videos. Okay, I've got a picker wheel up on my screen. I've got 10 random markets chosen. We are gonna spin the wheel and pick a market. Billings, Montana is the winner. Let's go find a deal. Okay, so I'm gonna to go to joinpropware.com and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search in our market of Billings, Montana. And there it is. I'm gonna go ahead and select MLS Active, single family, and I'm gonna put a minimum three bedroom. Just has some simple filters. You can certainly look at two bedrooms if you want, but I'm just gonna to try to stay out of the low price and small homes. Then I'm gonna sort by list price and I'm gonna go lowest to highest. And you'll notice here on the left is a map of billings with all these dots. These are properties that are for sale. It also shows me pendings and we've got like 205 to go after. And then on the right, you'll see these property records. And each one of these gives me some more information at a high level glance. So like for example, this one here, it's a individually owned, it's for sale, empty nester, which means they've owned it for a while and it's high equity and it's an intra-family transfer. So it's giving me like all the different things that this, that this hits on tags for distress. And we can simply just go through some of these and find different properties. So you can start at the top and work your way down or you can select one that looks interesting to you. So if I check on this one here on Morgan, here's the property. This gives me some pictures and you can see here like old, everything looks super old, old kitchen and looks like it needs some work. So this might be a great property to go after. Big write up here, I like to look at the write up here and see if there's anything that's triggering me to know that this has got some distress here. And you can see here it's talking about charm, uh, major components have been done, like a new sewer thing, endless potential, uh, so nothing really, you know, shooting out that there's distress other than I'm just looking at the pictures and I can tell that it needs some work done. Okay, so next, what am I going to do? I like to look at the history and see what's going on here. So this Melissa Martinez estate bought this property, you know, 25 years ago almost. And so it doesn't really tell us what they acquired it for, but here's a bunch of data on the listing side and Aaron Redland is the agent. So this has been sitting on the market for a while, which is a good sign because maybe now they're motivated to take a lower offer. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to comps and I'm gonna make sure that I select an area I like. If I zoom out a little bit, you're gonna see here some major crossroads. I like to try to match up to some major crossroads. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and click draw and then I'm just gonna go follow this ma these major roads right here. And I'm gonna go along here. There we go. So that's the area that I wanna stay inside of. You see, I've got a ton of comps. That's going back a year. Let's drop it down to six months. And we are 1,100 square feet. So I'm gonna do a range of plus or minus 30%. And now what I wanna do is I'm gonna go look at price per square foot. And I wanna identify the highest priced homes based on price per square foot. So you can see here, I think I want to stay up in the two. So I got a 239 a foot, 260 a foot. Now those are smaller homes, but then let's say I'll go, to, I'll grab this 208, 214. And look at this one. This one's on Morgan. So this is probably a good comp 171. Let's go ahead and grab that as well. So we're looking at around 243 or so. You know, that's putting us right there in the, in the mid twos. 
So now let's go to the deal analyzer and guys, I'll give you my deal analyzer for free. Just go to mydealanalyzer.com and you can download this digital deal analyzer. So our square footage on our house was 1148. So if I go to my deal analyzer, I'm going to put 1148 on the square footage and we want this thing to come in around 250. So that's going to put me up in the two, you know, maybe 216. Probably 218 a foot gets me to 250 as my ARV. Now I'm going to budget probably, I, I like 50,000. I think that's probably a decent number. Whoops, where are we? Here we are. Um, let me go back to the property. You can see these pictures here. You know, I'm looking at kitchen, a whole new kitchen, probably flooring, painting for sure. You know, probably need to go into these bathrooms and do some work, put a tile surround in, new floors. Some work out here. I don't know what's going on with this deck or this big, I don't know if this is like a big porch or what's what this is. It looks like a sort of like an open carport, but they closed it in. It's kind of weird. So I'm going to put a $50,000 budget, which means if I factor in 9% to cover closing and commissions, 6% to cover financing, a 20% profit, which I definitely would want to shoot for about a 50K profit or any other investor would, I think, on a project like this. And then if I put a $15,000 uh, wholesale fee, that puts me right around $100,000. So if I could get this for $100,000, this would be a good deal. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and contact this agent. I'm going to first text the agent. Let's see, where is it? If I click show more, I'm going to go down here and it's going to give me this uh, Aaron Redlin with EXP. And what I'm going to do is I've got a couple phone numbers here. Is I'm going to just go ahead and text Morgan. And I'm going to say basically, hi, Morgan. I'm a real estate investor looking to make a cash offer on your property on... What was it again? Morgan, can I call you? So let's put that in. So again, let me, let me say that again. Hi, Morgan. I'm a real estate investor looking to make a cash offer on your listing on Morgan Street. Can I call you? And now what that does is it just, first of all, lets me know that it went through. So I know that I'm dealing with a cell phone. And, um, and then it lets her know that the number that she's getting text from, which I'll call now, is an investor. Sometimes since it's not the same area code, they won't answer. So it's a great little way to make sure that you get through to the agent and you're, you got the right number, you get through, you're prepping them that you're going to call, and it's just cuts, shortcuts a lot of time. So now let's see if we can uh, call and talk to this agent, Aaron, and make an offer. Hello, this is Jerry. Hi, Jerry. This is Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Jeez. Sorry, I kept missing you. It's been a busy day. Has it? Uh, yes. Yes, which is good. I don't yeah. complain about being busy. Goes by fast um, that way. Yeah, absolutely. That's how you keep things rolling. <laughs> um, so the Morgan property, you're, have you taken a look at it? No, I haven't seen it personally. Just looked at, looking at the pictures here. Okay. I'm an investor looking at possibly for a flip. What do you think about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, Needs some work. It does. I, I think it would be a great flip. Um, so there are uh, street improvements going on right there. So there'll be brand new sidewalk in front of the house, mm. brand new streets. New oh, sewer. Yeah, recently new, yep, it was recently tied to the sewer main and the old drain field was removed. Um, so that's all taken out. Okay. Um, there was an inspection done um, from a previous potential buyer. And I do have a copy of that and I can send that to you also. Okay. Yeah, that's um, great. So there is a crack in the foundation, you know, your typical 1925 house. Yes. There's cracks, and, you know, there's deferred maintenance and other concerns on there, but you know, new roof, new furnace, new water heater, um, newer plumbing and electrical. Um, I'm trying to remember what all was, done in there new ac um so i mean your major ticket want things are taken roof, care of did you say roof's good yep roof's good yeah so man with all that but your is the foundation though has some issues you said or yeah well i mean it's a 1925 house yeah um there's a couple cracks that pulled up on the inspection mm -hmm. um i don't know but it's not settling or like unlevel floors 
there is some, uh, I mean, again, 1925, but there is some slope on the floors. Yeah. Uh, it is a crawl space and, and I can send you the disclosure to the property disclosure that the owner has when yeah. she bought it. The previous owner had put a Jack in the crawl space to lift to it up, kind of lift it up. Um, but she hasn't had any issues since then. And she bought it, I think 25 years ago. Yeah. It looks um, like they looks are like you local. Well, no, but I've got property in um, Kalispell up in Flathead. Okay. But, I mean, to me, the entire state of Montana is like your real estate market. <laughs> we're, a big, we're a big market there. Well, I just mean, you know, it's, there's, it's not a lot of population if you take the whole state. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I've got several properties up, up in Kalispell. Um, but, yeah, just looking for you know, a good deal that I could get at a discount and then fix up and flip. Problem is, I, pr I think I've got to be quite a bit below still where you're at is the problem. Okay. Um, I don't know, how much flexibility do you think the seller has? Are they looking to move it or willing to wait a while or where, where are they at? I mean, what, 120 it's days on, on the market? Yeah, it's been on there a while. Um, when mm -hmm. I first got it, they didn't want to look at comps. They just had this number in their heads. Yeah, yeah. And that was hard. And then the feedback that we've been getting from showings and then that inspection report, um, that was, you know, a little taste of reality for them. Was it? it? There was a lot of work. Um, what would I, you, what would you budget on this for a rehab? For a rehab? Well, you definitely got to do cabinets and counters and. Yeah. You're going to do a whole new kitchen. Yeah. Um, bathroom. Mm -hmm. Um, windows, siding, um, 50, I mean, it depends on if you're going to like flip it or hold it, flip it. I would flip it. flip it. Well, I mean, the siding, I think could just use paint. paint. Yeah. I'd paint. Yeah. It. yeah. Especially for that location. I, I don't know. You don't want to over improve just because it is, mm -hmm. it's not a rough neighborhood, but it's not the high end or middle class. I mean, there's um, one that sold on 4,400 Morgan. Um, and it got 243 a foot. I don't know if you saw that one. Let me pull it up. I mean, it doesn't, I don't know if it was renovated or not. It doesn't, let me see if this is how old this was. Um, let me see. I got it right here. So this, I don't know. It doesn't. There's no pictures, but it's, it was only a two bedroom, 912 square feet, 44 Morgan. When did this sell? Um, where'd it go? I'm just looking it up real quick on Zillow. I mean, it sold last May, so it's kind of an older comp, a little almost a year ago. And it sold for, what'd I say? Um, yeah, it got, I think it sold for, yeah, I'm trying to find Let me see if I can pull 240, anything. maybe somewhere around there. So I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of feeling like you, maybe 250 would be a, a retail number, like the back end number on this. Okay. Are you fit? Does that sound about right to you? Like if, if I, if I renovated this and, and resold it, does 250 feel reasonable? For 250? Yeah. Um, Am I yeah, pushing I it? It might be pushing it yeah. just given the location. Um, the space, I mean, it's got a nice yard. I would definitely pull off that patio, the covered patio, because there's so much peeling paint. Mm -hmm. um, and then I don't know if there's enough space for a garage. I mean, you could maybe do like a single car. I definitely don't have that there. in the budget. Right. But I mean, just at least to have like a clean slate for somebody to come in there and being able to do that. Yeah. I mean, um, if I, if I, if I put it at like 235 and I spend 50, 
which I'll spend every bit of 50 on that house. Okay. By the time I factor in like closing costs, commissions, financing with my investors, you know, and then some profit, I'm, I'm just way under where they're at. So it, it might not be a good fit. Bring an offer. Uh, they'll be motivated if an offer comes in. I mean, it's like offensively low though. <laughs> it's like, I mean, I think I'd have to be under a hundred. Where are you at right now on it? Let's see. Yeah, you're at 199. Yeah, I'm like, I'm probably at like half of where you're at. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because you have, there's just so much, there's all the soft cost to sell, to buy and sell. And then try to make something. I mean, you want you want to make something if you're going to spend all that money on it and time and right. Right. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, it doesn't hurt to do a verbal and it's cash. And then, you know, if they say go jump off a cliff, then that's fine. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, do you have an agent representing you? No, or? no. That's the other thing I'd let okay. you write for me. So are you able to do that? I am. Yep. Great. And more okay. than anything, I'd love to, work with you on other deals. I mean, do you have any, do you have anything else right now? That's distressed. That might be a good investor deal. Um, well, I put an offer in on one the other day. For you or who? For another investor? Yeah. Uh, I'm waiting to hear back. It was pretty low, but, um, I definitely keep an eye out because I, that's what I also do. Um, okay. I'm looking for that. So yeah, I could definitely keep you in my contacts and let's stay in touch and yeah, save me as a cash buyer in the area, and if you come, what well, ideally what what I what works the best for me would be if you find something distressed and you get the seller to agree to list with you. You call me, we work out an offer. You know, assuming the seller would rather just take a quick cash offer and not go on market, I do a lot of deals that way. So like a pocket listing is great because then. You know, you, you write for me, you get both sides. I get a deal that I don't have to compete with the open market on and everybody wins. Right. Assuming the seller's open for a cash offer without having to, you know, do all the things. Absolutely. But definitely I'm, uh, I'm more interested in creating a relationship with you where we can do deals over time than any one deal. So if this doesn't work out, I'd still like to stay connected and see if we can do some deals in the future. Absolutely. I'm all about that. Um, Do you want to just see what they think about a hundred grand? Absolutely. Okay, great. Okay. A hundred and hundred and cash. yeah. And then yep. maybe just, maybe just a few days inspection, just to look at that report, make sure like that foundation's nothing to be too scared about, but that's it. Okay. Closing. No, just, just a few days on that. And then, you know, whatever, close in 30 days or whenever. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Yep. I will give them a call and see what they say. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. Thank Good you. Touch. Yep. Talk to you soon. Bye. Appreciate you. Bye. Okay. Guys, uh, you know, sometimes it's not offensive and I hope you really got a lot out of that because I made the offer for a hundred grand and notice how I didn't just come right out and do it. I kind of finessed my way to my low offer. Uh, I even said, I, I'm, I'm scared to give it to you because it's offensively low. So I'm like acknowledging that I'm lowballing, And what that does is it just softens the blow. Like it's, it's prepping the agent for your low offer and it's not, you're, you're not coming across rude or I don't know. Sometimes when you make a low offer, it's just so abrasive that it's offensive to people. And I have that all the time. And it could have been, she could have taken offense to that, but she's with me, right? Like she gets it that it's gonna need to be quite a bit lower. And what I do is I try to help that agent see that. Now they may not care, but what I'll do is I'll say, look, we're at 250 on the back end. I'm gonna spend 50, that puts me at 200. You know, by the time I do profit and closing fees and commissions and cost for money and I build in all these numbers, I gotta be way down. And so by prepping them like that, it makes it so that your low offer isn't so abrasive, isn't so offensive. And look at her, she's like, yeah, I'll go make that offer. So she's even willing to go to bat. The double dip certainly helps. So I made sure that was clear. And again, just like I do on all these calls in the show here, or whenever you hear me talk to agents, I'm always 
focusing on the relationship. I'm always talking about save my number, call me when you get distressed properties, let's work out a deal before you even list it. That's the key. And she's an investor mindset too, which helps, right? So she's like, hey, I buy properties too, which means that she gets it. It's not offensive to her that we're offering 100,000 on a $200,000 house, <laughs> right? So it went great, like this is perfect. This is the ideal relationship, the ideal call. It couldn't have gone any better actually on a property that's way overpriced to make a low ball offer. So I hope you guys got a lot out of that. Guys, remember, uh, I'm, I found this deal on PropWire. Make sure you're using that. It's the go-to software tool that's absolutely free. And PropWire is doing a really cool special right now where you can get $300 worth of skip tracing, which is 2,500 skip traces per month for just $97 per month. So you sign up, you pay $97 a month, you get uh, 2,500 skip traces each and every month for the $97 a month, absolute no-brainer. That allows you to get their phone numbers where you can now call and do the same type of thing with off-market leads. And we've got a lot of those with PropWire as well. So really cool, check that out. Just go to propwiregold.com to get signed up for that. And leave a comment, let me know your big takeaways. What did you learn from this call? What were some nuggets you grabbed and some things that you're gonna now do differently? Was it inspiring? Did it help you? Is this helpful for you to wanna get out there and do your own calls and, and go after your own deals? Love to hear from you and I'll see you on the next video.